In this example, we're going to take a look at solving this proportion, and you'll notice we have the variable x in a few different places. And so if this is something you would like to try first on your own, go ahead and pause the video and do so, and then come on back and we'll work a solution together. Okay, so we have this ratio or this fraction equaling another ratio or fraction. That's kind of what causes this to be a proportion. And we know that cross products will be equal to each other. So that's how we'll build our equation. But before we get too far, let's go ahead and look at these denominators. I see I have x plus 7 and x minus 2. Well, remember when you have a variable in the denominator, you just have to make sure that the value of x cannot come out to be, you know, something that's going to cause a zero down here because we can't divide by zero. So x plus 7, well, we know that x plus 7 cannot be zero, which means x cannot be negative 7. We also know that x minus 2 cannot be zero, so x cannot be 2. So we have these two values that we need to watch out for. So we're going to solve this like normal, but then we're going to inspect these values at the end to see if uh, they are uh, going to be a problem or not. Okay, so let's go ahead and do these cross products. And so we know this um, cross products are going to be equal to each other. So we'll take this 4x and we'll multiply it by the x minus 2 and set that equal to 10 times the binomial there, x plus 7. All right, so we have our equations. We have our job cut out for us here. And so let's go ahead and start by getting rid of these parentheses by distributing. So it looks like 4x squared minus 8x will equal 10x plus 70. All right. And so it looks like we're going to have a nice quadratic equation. We have degree 2 here. This x squared term is the highest degree term. And he's positive over here on the left side. So let's go ahead and push all the terms over to the left side of the equal sign. And then that'll be equal to 0 then. And then we can use our 0 property of multiplication to solve. So let's go ahead. So we'll subtract 10x and we'll subtract 70. We'll see what this looks like. So 4x squared minus 8x, which was already over there, minus 10x minus 70 equals 0. Looks like we can go ahead and put some like terms together. So 4x squared minus 18x minus 70 equals 0. And so our job is to go ahead and solve this, and it looks like we can probably do so by factoring. So you'll notice the numbers here, 4, 18, and 70 are all even. So let's go ahead and take a greatest common factor of 2 out. And uh, kind of that makes it easier because all these numbers are a little smaller, and that's nicer to work with. All right. So we'll see that this leading coefficient is not 1, so we'll need to factor this using a method. So let's go ahead and use the AC method. This is uh, definitely the one I prefer. And down in the description for this video is a link where you can go ahead and find out more about this AC method and how I'm doing it and why I'm doing it this way. All right, so this method, I'm going to take 2 and multiply by the constant at negative 35. So I'll get negative 70. And so I'm looking for factors, so numbers that multiply to negative 70 that add to make the um, coefficient of this linear term, so add to make negative 9. So we have 1 and 70, 2 and 35, let's see, 5 and 14, 7, 10. So these will be our factors. And so one more thing. So if they multiply to make a negative, we you know we have to have one positive, one negative, and they're going to add to make a negative. So we know the larger one is negative and the smaller one is positive. And so, any of these pairs work out? Well, sure, it looks like positive 5 and negative 14. So let's go ahead and rewrite that middle term, and we're going to take it and break it down into two like terms that are both x's, but have these coefficients. So positive 5x and negative 14x, and equals to zero. Okay, so at this point we can do factor by grouping, and so we'll have the 2 out front, which is our greatest common factor. And then let's focus on the GCF here, which is going to be an x. So it looks like 2x plus 5. Here it looks like a negative 7. So 2x plus 5. Close everything up equal to 0. Okay. And then 2x plus 5 and 2x plus 5. Yeah, those guys are the same. So here we go. So one of the factors will be 2x plus 5. And the other factor will be x minus 7. 
Okay, so here we have our complete factorization of our quadratic trinomial. So we're going to go ahead and use the zero property of multiplication, which says if we're multiplying all these things together and we get zero, well, you know, one of these things has to be zero. So we'll account for all of them. So we'll say 2 equals zero, 2x plus 5 equals zero, x minus 7 equals zero. Well, of course, this 2 equals 0 doesn't give us anything. That's a false statement. There's not even a variable included. And so this guy will give us, let's see, negative 5 over 2. And this guy will give us a positive 7. So we're going to say the values for x in our case are negative 5 halves and 7. But remember, we had a couple of stipulations previously, values that x could not be. So let's go ahead and shuffle back to the top. We said x could not be negative 7 or positive 2. Okay, so negative 7. Well, x is positive 7, so that's okay. So we know that these two values are the values for x, so they are the solutions to this original uh, proportion here, and we solve for x.